Well, um, first of all, coming from Portland, Oregon, where we were full mm. new dancers with full bar, full everything, I, I was never a person who's uncomfortable with being nude, but I am uncomfortable with hustle. And um, I know that all the nude clubs, you have to do lap dances. There isn't really such thing as like hipsters coming in and making it rain stage money. Right. So um, I knew that I had no like zero options to work in LA because the only other bikini bar that is in my area is Jumbo's. And um, I was told a long time ago, I'd have to wear a wig to work there and I refuse. So um, I yeah, just because they discriminate in their hiring practices there that's why yeah i mean it against yeah 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 they also don't really like tattooed girls that much they have some they, they, whatever they have tattooed so you were just discriminated against because that's how they are there and that's part of an issue anyways well no no on. but i mean but let me say though like the two yeah. heavily tattooed girls that they have they won't even let them work the same shift because they don't want the club looking heavily tattooed oh i didn't know that detail it is um, a thing there. And if you look now, they used to be known to have a lot of tattooed girls. I know but, that. But the owner doesn't like it anymore. She thinks that it brings in hipsters and that they don't have money. <laughs> okay. But like, it's called Jumbo's Clown Room. What else is it going to bring in? <laughs> anyway. Yeah, her whole logic is like, okay, we could talk okay. for hours about that. Yeah. But yeah. yeah. So anyways, that's, a, that's outside the point. But yeah, I definitely yeah. didn't want to work at a nude club because um, also, also the nude clubs in LA also discriminate against girls like me as well. Like heavily yeah. tattooed, crazy hair. It's not a thing that is really popular in the LA strip club culture. And right. um I get that to a degree, but also um, I have my own clientele that like the way I look. So I feel like, you know, whatever people need to, you know, let me have my thing, but whatever. Yeah. I didn't want to work at any of the clubs here. So I quit. You quit stripping. Yeah. It's a sad day. Yeah. Yeah. Because you've been stripping for how long now? Almost 20 years. Like, yeah. 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 I feel that because in December of 2018, when I had my accident, I was forced to quit and it wasn't, I wasn't ready to quit, you know? So it definitely felt like I lost a part of me. Um, I think a lot of people get confused and think that the majority of us are stripping because we're in some sort of like dire fucked up situation that that's our only option. Um, but for me, it was like a passion and a lifelong career and a love. And yeah. um, it was devastating to lose that. So I can, I feel you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Teddy, what about you? What did you feel like your options were? Uh, I felt I had options, but none of them were options I wanted. So they weren't really yeah. options. I had come up through right. LA dancing in like each different tier. So I knew what they were all like, but I... When I came to Cheetahs, I felt so comfortable in a way that I hadn't felt working anywhere else. And I felt, yeah. like, so satisfied there that I didn't want to go back to – like, you don't want to go back to stuff you had now that you've known, like, oh, I can have somewhere where I could basically have it all. Where I could, like, make my yeah. money the way I want, and I can talk to who I want, and I can hang out with who I want, and I can look the way I prefer to look. Yeah. And all in all, just do that. And so um, also, oh, sorry. <laughs> what? It's okay. Oh, okay. Also, what I was going to say as a quick summary is I am, okay. I have more tattoos than I did when I started. I have more piercings than I did when I started. And I'm also yeah. still black, which was the same as when I started. Yeah. But all of those compounded, especially with the fact that after the employee law started, a lot of places started locking down their hiring practices because they really looked at the girls they hired more as like investments mm -hmm. now because they actually have to think about paying you. They, most clubs are like less willing to hire people that are like outside of that. So after just going to places like a couple times and being like, oh, no, we're not hiring. When I'm like, I know you're hiring because <laughs> you said over the phone you were hiring. I was just like, I'm just going to take like, right, a right, right. hiatus because I just need a second. 
Uh, yeah. My God, I have like so many questions and threads that we can go through. Um, so I have a question. Um, you when you said um, early on, um, oh, we heard that they might be selling. Isn't this wasn't isn't this a reoccurring pattern with these particular owners at Cheetahs where they like sell their business? And I'm using air quotes right? Where they, they sell the business, but they don't, they basically say they're selling it, but they're not selling it. It's just a new management team coming in. And that's kind of what happened in this situation. This is not the first time they've done that, right? Well, I think um, I can just say that I know that Bobby has wanted to sell cheetahs forever, like, but he puts it at such a high price. Um, he wants $4 million. Well, the last and, time I um, saw the price, it was 5 million. Well, yeah, it could be that now too. Um, yeah. He, I think he feels like being located next to the hospital that they'll eventually buy it just for the extra space. Hmm. Um, but which, you know, could happen, but um, he has definitely let people come in and manage it. I was there at Cheetahs back in the, um, you know, right after 2010, there was a guy named Benoit who was managing it for a while, who was a total Coke head. And I worked there during his stint where he pretty much um, almost bankrupt that club at that time. Hmm because he was just doing blow with the waitress that he was fucking all night. And um, I would sometimes show up to work and they would be passed out in the club still from the night before. (laughs) And um, yeah, and I would be like, wait, these people are my managers. And they were also trying to charge each girl that worked there, even though they barely had clientele, they were trying to charge us $40 a night to work there. And um, I was like, $40. (laughs) Like the kind of customers that come in here, like I was trying... I was trying to build a clientele there. I didn't really have it yet. I had just moved here from Portland and I was like, you guys don't have people that make it rain here yet. Like you can't ask for $40, you know, that it just takes that one guy. And I'm like, there's nobody. (laughs) (laughs) So um, yeah, those people were horrible. And then Bobby took it back, but then also and Bobby's the owner. And he also transferred his name out to his son at another time making us all panic at that time because he put a note there was a note up on the door of change of ownership and we all freaked out then and thought we needed to change our jobs as well but they kept you know telling us no 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 no, we're not selling and they didn't so that's why this time when this happened again you know some of us actually did think we would get our jobs back until we saw who the new management was going to be right and so the new management now so let's let's Talk about what was the vibe at Cheetahs before this happened? I mean, I would say the vibe of Cheetahs before was basically like a very artsy, eclectic group of girls. We had, um, you know, lots of different performance art shows that would come in. Bands would come in. Right before we, we like, shut down, we had FKA Twigs perform there. It was epic, you know, like. Uh, and Halsey and like yeah a lot of artists like that like big names were coming in and bringing part private parties and we had did shows there too did shows there yeah we had super cool like super hip events we had our transgender inclusive night yeah Um, the first of that happening in any strip club here or anywhere that I've heard of Jolene right with Daphne Jolene with Daphne that was coming in um, we had all sorts of really cool event nights, parties, um, cool customers, like our customers were a uh, eclectic group as well. Like, of course there was like the lonely hearts guys, but then there was also, we had a lot of young people, couples, girls, like people that we could really do a stage show for, you know? And, um, yeah, that, that was a beautiful time. Yeah. And so what is the vibe now because we need people to understand how different it is to make sense to them why you can't go back teddy yeah the vibe now is the people who took it over were the people who ran v live which is v live is basically like an atlanta club transported into los angeles that's the best way to think about it so while there is which is great right yeah but it just wasn't what Cheetahs was before. Yeah, it's great. So right. And you don't do it that way, right? So no. there's no shade on that vibe. It's just, yeah. The customers yeah. are completely different. And yeah, the no, I mean, I, I like... Different things. Oh, sorry. Right, right. Yeah. yeah, I agree. Like, I would... 
I would like to work that night as well, but um, I also wouldn't like to be, uh, you know, forced to do lap dances and also expected to pay a huge tip out, but um, like they have to pay a lot of money. But I think that those girls can make more money because they have uh, certain assets that the clientele that are coming there now are looking for that I don't have. So. Right. So the, the vibe and, you know, I, I'm going to explain to the audience just because assuming that some people have, are totally clueless. The, the Atlanta vibe is um, mostly women of color, very thick, um, very hip hop scene. Um, and, and while I love that scene, it's just a complete 180 from what Cheetahs used to be. So any of the, the, the tattooed girls, the, the artsy type girls, they're not going to fit into that scene and they're not going to make the money. And the money that's being thrown around, it's like when you look at the videos on Instagram right now, I mean, they're like swimming in money. The floor is covered in money. Um, And they're also making dancers sign contracts that state that they're customers of the club, that they're not even independent contractors coming in and working, that they're straight up customers and they're paying exorbitant house fees, like probably a hundred, hundred and fifty dollars. Mm-hmm. Probably goes up every hour that they show up late to work, um, and they're being have mandatory tip outs. And you're right, they're probably um, being highly coerced into doing all types of lap dancing and all the things, you know, because they're notorious. Like they they've they've done the same thing in other types of clubs in LA. And, um, and there's other clubs in LA having people sign, having dancers sign contracts saying that they're customers. And so, yeah, you can't go back. No. It's not your same house anymore. No. Yeah. Um, before you left, before they closed, I should say, um, they had changed your status according to the new AB5 law and ABC test that was put into place by California officials. Originally, you were not paying house fees, right? You were just going into work and just doing tip out? No, back in the day, we had to pay a house fee and tip out the bouncer and the DJ. And that didn't change once we became employees either. That was always the same. Right. But what did change is then you had to start paying heavily out on lap dances, right? Yeah. Well, Mm -hmm. they claimed that the lap dance money was a service that they provide. And so... um, I mean, well, hold, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. Go backwards. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. That's the first time I've heard that. Really? They claimed that the lap dances that you did yeah. was a service that they provided. 